Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about makeup from a colour analysis point of view. I will leave timestamps linked in the description box below and I'm going to go through the list of topics that I am going to be talking to you about. First I'm going to talk about foundation, then blusher, eyeshadow, lipsticks, highlighters, brows, mascara and contour. We'll also be talking about concealer and how to correct things like dark circles and redness by using the colour wheel and colour theory. So they are the 10 topics I am going to be talking about in this video. I also must point out that I'm not wearing any makeup at all today just my usually usual skincare products, including the sunscreen that has a bit of a white cast to it. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is foundation. Now when it comes to foundation, the only thing that's really important here is what's called the overtone. And that is how your skin appears on the outside, the very out, outer colour of your skin, the surface colour. So only focusing on your skin colour and it doesn't matter whether it's warm, like warmer or cooler. If you, if you have a cool undertone you can still have a warmer overtone. That is very possible and vice versa where you have a warm undertone and a cool overtone. These things are very possible. When it comes to the other products of makeup we focus on the undertone, which is when we look at the fatty layer, the fatty cells under the skin, um, where we see whether we are more yellow based, which is warm, or blue based, which is cool. And things like the blusher, the highlighter, eyeshadows, everything else apart from foundation is going to involve the undertone. Another thing I want to talk to you about is concealers. When it comes to concealers, same thing with the foundations. Try not to deviate too far away from your natural skin colour. Don't go too light or too dark. Keep it a similar shade to your skin colour. Maybe go a shade lighter than your skin colour if you need to. So the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is blusher. When it comes to blusher, this is where we start to involve the undertone because when you get the undertone right, everything harmonises. Everything looks natural. You look very well put together without looking like you've made such an effort. When you use makeup colours in the wrong undertone, it can sit on top of the skin, it clashes and it can drain the colour from your face. It can actually age you a bit, it can drain you, it can even emphasise dark circles, wrinkles. When it comes to blushes, for warm undertones we pick the more corally, apricotty, peachy blusher colours. When it comes to the cooler undertones, we focus on the pinky, plummy undertones, like the blue-based undertones of, uh, of blusher. And when it comes to blusher, we try to match our ear, the closest colour to our ear. Um, and it's all we can also find our um, blusher colours by looking at our undertone and level of intensity. For example, for me, I suit cool undertoned and more and uh, colours that are on the softer side rather than the brighter side. Next, I'm going to talk about eyeshadows. For eyeshadows, for the springs and autumns, you are really best with golden, more golden shades. For springs, you can go for those brighter, warm colours, like the grassy greens, lighter oranges, because you have lightness to you. You might not want to go for bright oranges too much, because even that can look a bit too much, unless you are 
bright, like really bright as a spring. Go for lighter aquas, you can never fail with lighter aquas. And if you're really bright, go for brighter aquas because they are your best kinds of blue. And if you are on the warmer side of spring, go for go for a golden sparkle around it or on the aqua to warm it up more so that it's not too cold because with warm golden springs it's best that you warm up your colours as much as possible. Have lots of yellow in your colours. When it comes to autumns you are best with the tans, the golds, amber, kingfisher, kingfisher is another great one, a peacock. Peacock is your best kind of blue um, because it's not too light and it's not too bright and it's just right for your undertone as a blue. Now when it comes to, to winters, uh, winters suit the royal purples, the, the brightest darkest colours uh, in charcoal, not black because black can look a bit too much but charcoal, although some people might work with black more than others but charcoal is the universal shade for winters in general and the electric blue, lagoon blue, turquoise blues are great for winters as well. You can go for a dark emerald or pine green on your eyes as well. It would be really nice as a recommendation. Um, even a lighter emerald for those who are on the lighter side of winter can be absolutely lovely. Royal purple, stunning. When it comes to summers and winters, we suit the uh, more silver than gold. In fact, gold looks sallowing on us. Now, if you are a summer, like myself, you choose more smoky, softer, lighter eyeshadows like taupe. Uh, taupe. Taupe. I never, I never know how to pronounce that word without sounding too posh. Taupe. Uh, that's how I pronounce it without sounding too posh. Grade purples, lilac, lavender. Especially if you're a lighter summer, or vanilla if you're a lighter summer. Um, you can even choose it as like a transition shade. Yeah, in like in your crease for smoky, smokier eye colours if you're a dark summer as well because we do need slightly darker, bolder ones than ordinal because it can look a bit wishy-washy with too many light colours for us dark summers. Pastel aqua because that's a cooled down version of aqua and it's softer than a lagoon blue or a turquoise blue. I think for dark summer so we can get away with turquoise blue a bit more, just a little bit. You know, mix it in with our more smoky colours. Um, and cornflower is really good as well for the eyeshadows for summers. Because it's a softer version of electric blue. But on us it will look electric without it being garish. The next thing I want to talk about are lipsticks. And we also look at the undertone and intensity for lipsticks as well because when you get the wrong intensity eyeshadows and lipsticks you see the, the makeup before your features and before you uh, or it can look a bit faded, you can, you can look a bit faded in the wrong intensity of lipsticks and eyeshadows and blushes and we don't want to look faded but at the same time, we don't want to look like we're taken over by the makeup colours. So for springs, you are best in the lighter, brighter lipsticks, like um, coral. Coral's universal, pretty much, because it for you, it's universal for springs and autumns, I mean, not for winters or summers. Mm. No, because coral's too warm. Uh, but for springs and autumns, coral is really good. Springs are great with geranium red, and uh, be like autumns are as well. Another universal warm colour for the warm seasons. Flamingo geranium pink exclusively for the springs. For autumns, your exclusive um your exclusive lipstick is rust. Because for springs, rust is too dark and soft and can make them look a bit pale. Whereas 
for geranium and flamingo pinks. For autumns, it can look too out there. Especially since autumns don't suit too many pinks. In fact, they have the least amount of pinks in their palette. Which I will show you up here an example of that. For summers and winters for lipsticks, um, summers are best with plum pinks, rose pinks and softer cool reds. Um, when it comes to winters you are best with brighter or darker pinks like fuchsia, deep fuchsia and magenta which is the brightest one if you're in the brighter side of winter. And for summers you can choose a soft burgundy rose rather than a burgundy which winters are really good with burgundy. Um, like for lipsticks. Winters are also great with brighter reds or sometimes deeper reds if they're on the deeper, less intense side of winter. And for summers with the lipsticks you can also choose a softer version of cherry red so that you don't get lost behind the red lipstick. Especially for those who are more scared of wearing a red lipstick. Next on the agenda we're talking about highlighters. This is going to be quite a short topic because it's quite generalised with this one. With highlighters it's important to look for undertone more than anything else. For the warm seasons of spring and autumn you are best in golden or peachy highlighters. With the cool seasons of summer and winter you are better off with the more pinky silver silvery highlights like a blue based pink rather than a peachy pink. That topic's done so now we're going to, going to go for the brows which is another slightly short topic. Um, when it comes to eyebrows generally you don't want to go any darker or too lighter than your natural hair colour because it can look a bit harsh or it can look a bit washed out and when it comes to brows, pick uh, more golden or coppery tones if you are, like, depending on your natural hair colour. Uh, pick golden if you are more golden, pick copper if you are more copper for your, um, like for different undertones if you are warm. Make sure if you are cool, you go for the more taupe colours if you're darker or ashy colours if you are lighter and more blue based browns if you are more intense like a, a winter um, or you can choose icy if you're one of those icy blondes for brows as well. Mascara, another short topic. People who are warm should really pick the um, browns. Browns are your best because black is too harsh for warm undertones. Summers you can pick brown, we can pick brown as well. I pick brown mascara if I wear brown mascara because even on me as a dark summer I find black can look a bit too out there um, sometimes. Uh, when it comes to winters you can wear black mascara all the way. Um, if you are a dark summer or a winter, we can also choose a blue mascara if we want to, you know, add a bit of fun to our uh, mascaras. And lastly, contour. A very, very short topic, again, for the last one. Um, with contours, try not to go too dark. Try to go possibly two to three or maybe two to four, if you feel comfortable enough. Two to four or two to three shades darker than your natural skin colour. Don't go any darker than four. In fact, I dare say don't go any darker than three shades darker because it can look a bit too much and it's harder to blend. Um, and when it comes to cool undertones, warm undertones, well, first we'll go to warm undertones. Go for more of a caramel or golden shade of contour. And if you are cool, 
Gulfart Tubs shade of contours or ashy, like an ashy brown as much as possible. When it comes to correcting things like dark circles and redness, I'm going to talk to you about that next. With dark circles, usually we have purple tones and we correct them with the opposite colour to purple, which is yellow. And if we have more blue under our eyes, like a blue, and the more blue the colour is, the more orange we should go. Um, we can go for a more coral shade under our eyes as a like a primer underneath a concealer to help eliminate the dark circles. When it comes to redness, we neutralise it with a green primer to help neutralise redness. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, please subscribe for more content. You can also listen to my music playlist, which I will link in the description box, box as well, my, of my latest album of a cappella songs. They don't have music, they just have lyrics. Could be considered a bit shit really, but <laughs> anyway. Um, thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye.